here. Go here, please. Professor, <gasps> why did you bring that woman here? <laughs> we agreed to do serious business today. Goodbye, dear. We have no time for you. Be quiet now. This is the C system. Please forgive these guys. They apparently did not see you properly. How could you ruin everything in the very first second? SI system is an international system of units. Nearly every country in the world has agreed to use this unified system in science, technology and even in everyday life. This system comprises base and derived units. Let's have a walk with the system and learn a little more about it. <coughs> so, the base units in the SI system are length, mass, time, electric current, the thermodynamic temperature, the amount of substance, the luminous intensity, all other units, for example force, pressure, power, energy, work, etc., are derived from the base units. They also have one unit of measurement in the SI system. As you noticed, the SI system considers that length should be measured in meters. But hardly anyone would think of measuring, for example, the length of a pencil in meters. It is clear that it's better and more convenient to use centimeters for this purpose. While to measure the distance between cities it's better to use kilometers. Hmm. Oh really? Do you create problems where none exists? Calm down, I'll measure everything right now. Hmm. What a nasty woman, everything was just fine. Why did Professor bring her here? The most attentive of you might have guessed that new units of measurement are obtained from the meter by adding a prefix, for example, centu or kilo. There are many prefixes. In the table we provide the most basic ones. Prefixes are used to form multiples, which means large, and submultiples, which means small units of measurement. Each prefix has its own factor. For example, the prefix kilo corresponds to the factor 10 raised to the third power. The prefix centi corresponds to the factor 10 raised to the negative 2 power. In order to get closer to the goal of this course and to learn how to convert one unit of measurement to another, we need to recall some math rules. Really? Math? Isn't it too much as for one course? Hmm. Indeed. Maybe it is a bit too much. Nope, it's just what we need. When it's written that 10 is raised to the power of 3, it means that 10 should be multiplied 3 times. And that will give us 1000. 10 is the base, and 3 is the exponent, or power. In this case, the exponent tells you how many zeros are going after the 1. For example, 10 to the second power is 1 and 2 zeros, that is, 100. 10 to the sixth power is 1 and 6 zeros. Which is a whole million. Numbers with negative exponents can be written using fractions or decimals. For example, let's take a look at the factor of the prefix centa. 10 to the negative 2 power. It is 1 divided by 10 to the second power, and it is the same as 1 divided by 100, which is 0 0.01. For a base of 10, a negative exponent shows us how many digits there are after the point. The factor of the prefix milli is 10 to the negative third power. This means that there are three digits after the decimal point, and this number is 0 0.001. The factor of the prefix micro is 10 to the negative six power, which corresponds one millionth which has six digits after the point. Well, everything should be clear. Now let's quickly recall the basic exponent rules. When multiplying exponents with the same bases, the powers are added, and when dividing exponents with the same bases, the powers are subtracted. Theory is theory, but you need to consolidate everything in practice. Let's run through some problems. What if I have already understood everything? May I not solve the problems? 10 to the third power times 10 to the sixth power. We simply write down the base which is 10. And we add the powers. 3 plus 6 equals 9. 
the answer is 10 to the 9th power. 10 to the negative 6th power times 10. We write down the base which is 10. And we add the powers. Negative 6 plus 1 equals negative 5. The answer is 10 to the negative 5th power. 10 to the power of 2 divided by 10 to the power of 3. We confidently and without hesitation write down the base. Then we subtract the powers. 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. The answer is 10 to the negative first power, or a tenth. Great. We speed up and move on. 10 to the sixth divided by 10 to the negative 3 power. We rewrite the base which is 10, and subtract the powers. 6 minus negative 3. Two minuses have met, which means that it's time for us to replace them with a plus. So 6 plus 3 equals 9. The answer is 10 to the ninth power. And finally, let's consider what we should do if we suddenly have to raise a power to another power. To do this, we need to multiply the powers. For example, 10 to the third power raised to the second power. We rewrite the base which is 10 and multiply 3 by 2. We get 6. The answer is 10 to the sixth power. Raise 10 to the minus second to the third power. We rewrite 10. We multiply negative 2 by 3. We get negative 6. The answer is 10 to the negative sixth power. Well, now it's time for you to train on your own. I'll give you some tasks. I'm sure you can deal with them. If not, write to me under the video. I'll try to help everyone. Guys, don't panic. I know where to find the correct answers. Professor has left a link in the description for the video. Go straight there. I did ask you not to tell everyone about it right away. Come on, Professor. Don't be such a nerd. So, here you need to make a number from the exponents. And here, you need to solve the problems. Good luck! See you in the next episode.